Chuck Yeager, Charles Elwood Yeager, born, 1923, is a former United States Air Force officer, flying ace, and record-setting test pilot. In 1947, he became the first pilot confirmed to have exceeded the speed of sound in level flight. Yeager's career began in World War II as a private in the United States Army Air Forces. After serving as an aircraft mechanic, in September 1942 he entered enlisted pilot training and upon graduation was promoted to the rank of flight officer, the World War II SOF equivalent to warrant officer, and became AP-51 fighter pilot. After the war, Yeager became a test pilot of many types of aircraft, including experimental rocket-powered aircraft. As the first human to officially break the sound barrier, on 1947, he flew the experimental Bell X-1 at Mach 1 at an altitude of, for which he won both the Collier and Mackay trophies in 1948. He then went on to break several other speed and altitude records. Jaeger later commanded fighter squadrons and wings in Germany, and in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War, and in recognition of the outstanding performance or ratings of those units he was promoted to Brigadier General. Jaeger's flying career spans more than 60 years and has taken him to many parts of the world, including the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War. Jaeger was born, 1923, to farming parents Susie May, Sizemore, and Albert Hal Jaeger in Myra, West Virginia, and graduated from high school in Hamlin, West Virginia, in June 1941. He had two brothers, Roy and Hal Jr., and two sisters, Doris Ann. Accidentally killed at age two by six year old Roy playing with a shotgun and Pansy Lee. His first experience with the military was as a teen at the Citizens Military Training Camp at Fort Benjamin Harrison, Indianapolis, Indiana, during the summers of 1939 and 1940. On 1945, Jaeger married Glenna Stickhouse, and the couple had four children. Glennis died in 1990. The name Jaeger is an anglicized form of the German name Jaeger or Jaeger, German. Hunter. He is the cousin of former baseball catcher Steve Yeager. Yeager enlisted as a private in the U.S. Army Air Forces on 1941, and became an aircraft mechanic at George Air Force Base, Victorville, California. At enlistment, Yeager was not eligible for flight training because of his age and educational background, but the entry of the U.S. into World War II less than three months later prompted the USAF to alter its recruiting standards. Having unusually sharp vision, a visual acuity rated 20 tenths, which once enabled him to shoot a deer at, Jaeger displayed natural talent as a pilot and was accepted for flight training. He received his wings and a promotion to flight officer at Luke Field, Arizona, where he graduated from Class 43 C on, 1943. Assigned to the 357th Fighter Group at Tonopah, Nevada, he initially trained as a fighter pilot, flying Bell P-39 Aerocobras being grounded for seven days for clipping a farmer's tree during a training flight, and shipped overseas with the group on, 1943. Stationed in the United Kingdom at RAF Lyston, Jaeger flew P-51 Mustangs in combat with the 363D Fighter Squadron. He named his aircraft Glamorous Glennis after his girlfriend, Glennis Faye Dickhouse, who became his wife in February 1945. Jaeger had gained one victory before he was shot down over France in his first aircraft, P-51 B-5 NA SN-43-6763, on, 1944 during his eighth mission. He escaped to Spain on with the help of the Maquis, French resistance, and returned to England on, 1944. During his stay with the Maquis, Jaeger assisted the guerrillas in duties that did not involve direct combat. He helped construct bombs for the group, a skill that he had learned from his father. He was awarded the Bronze Star for helping a B-24 navigator, Pat Patterson who was shot in the knee during the escape attempt, to cross the Pyrenees. Jaeger cut off the tendon by which Patterson's leg was hanging below the knee, then tied off the leg with a spare shirt made of parachute silk. Despite a regulation prohibiting evaders, escape pilots, from flying over enemy territory again, the purpose of which was to prevent a second capture from compromising resistance groups, Jaeger was reinstated to flying combat. He had joined another evader, Fellow P-51 pilot First Lieutenant Fred Glover, in speaking directly to the Supreme Allied Commander, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, on, 1944. With Glover pleading their case, they argued that because if Allies had invaded France and the Maquis were by then openly fighting the Nazis alongside Allied troops, if Jaeger or Glover were shot down again, there was little about those who had previously helped them evade capture that could be revealed to the enemy. Eisenhower 
after gaining permission from the War Department to decide the requests, concurred with Yeager and Glover. Yeager later credited his post war success in the Air Force to this decision, saying that his test pilot career followed naturally from his having been a decorated combat pilot, along with having been an aircraft mechanic before attending pilot school. In part, because of his maintenance background, he also frequently served as a maintenance officer in his flying units. Jaeger demonstrated outstanding flying skills and combat leadership. On, 1944, he became the first pilot in his group to make ace in a day, downing five enemy aircraft in a single mission. Two of these kills were scored without firing a single shot, when he flew into firing position against a Messerschmitt Bf 109, the pilot of the aircraft panicked, breaking to starboard and colliding with his wingman. Jaeger said both pilots bailed out. He finished the war with 11.5 official victories, including one of the first air to air victories over a jet fighter, a German Messerschmitt Me 262 that he shot down as it was on final approach for landing. In his 1986 memoirs, Jaeger recalled with disgust that atrocities were committed by both sides, said he went on a mission with orders from the 8th Air Force to strafe anything that moved. During the mission briefing, he whispered to Major Donald H. Bochke, if we are going to do things like this, we sure as hell better make sure we are on the winning side. Jaeger said, I'm certainly not proud of that particular strafing mission against civilians. But it is there, on the record and in my memory. He has also expressed bitterness at his treatment in England during World War II, describing the British as arrogant and nasty. Jaeger was commissioned a second lieutenant while at Lyston, and was promoted to captain before the end of his tour. He flew his 61st and final mission on. 1945, and returned to the United States in early February. As an evader, he received his choice of assignments and, because his new wife was pregnant, chose Wright Field to be near his home in West Virginia. His high number of flight hours and maintenance experience qualified him to become a functional test pilot of repaired aircraft, which brought him under the command of Colonel Albert Boyd, head of the Aeronautical Systems Flight Test Division. Jaeger remained in the Air Force after the war becoming a test pilot at Maroc Army Air Field, now Edwards Air Force Base, following graduation from Air Materiel Command Flight Performance School, Class 46C. After Bell Aircraft test pilot Chalmers Slick Goodland demanded $150,000, $1.6 million in 2015, to break the sound barrier, the USOP selected Jaeger to fly the rocket-powered Bell XS-1 in an ACA program to research high-speed flight. Such was the difficulty in this task that the answer to many of the inherent challenges was along the lines of Jaeger better have paid up insurance. Two nights before the scheduled date for the flight, Jaeger broke two ribs when he fell from a horse. He was worried that the injury would remove him from the mission and reported that he went to a civilian doctor in nearby Rosamund, who taped his ribs. Jaeger told only his wife, as well as friend and fellow project pilot Jack Ridley, about the accident. On the day of the flight, Jaeger was in such pain that he could not seal the X-1's hatch by himself. Ridley rigged up a device, using the end of a broom handle as an extra lever, to allow Jaeger to seal the hatch. Jaeger broke the sound barrier on, 1947, flying the X-1 Glamorous Glenis at Mach 1.07 at an altitude of over the Rogers Dry Lake and the Mojave Desert. The success of the mission was not announced to the public until June 1948. Jaeger was awarded the Mackay Trophy and the Collier Trophy in 1948 for his mock transcending flight, and the Harmon International Trophy in 1954. The X-1 he flew that day was later put on permanent display at the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum. Jaeger went on to break many other speed and altitude records. He was also one of the first American pilots to fly a MiG-15, after its pilot, Nokum Sok, defected to South Korea. Returning to Morocco, during the latter half of 1953, Jaeger was involved with the USAF team that was working on Thex 1A, an aircraft designed to surpass Mach 2 in level flight. That year, he flew a chase aircraft for the civilian pilot Jackie Cochran as she became the first woman to fly faster than sound. On 1953, the U.S. Navy program involving the D 558 2 Skyrocket and its pilot, Scott Crossfield, became the first team to reach twice the speed of sound out after they were bested, Ridley and Jaeger decided to beat rival Crossfield's speed record in a series of test flights that they dubbed Operation Nakaweep. Not only did they beat Crossfield by setting a new record at Mach 2.44 on, 1953, 
but they did it in time to spoil a celebration planned for the 50th anniversary of flight in which Crossfield was to be called the fastest man alive. The new record flight, however, did not entirely go to plan, since shortly after reaching Mach 2.44, Jaeger lost control of the X-18 about due to inertia coupling, a phenomenon largely unknown at the time. With the aircraft simultaneously rolling, pitching, and yawing out of control, Jaeger dropped in less than a minute before regaining control at around. He then managed to land without further incident. For this achievement, Jaeger was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, DSM, in 1954. Jaeger was foremost a fighter pilot and held several squadron and wing commands. From May 1955 to July 1957 he commanded the F-86H Sabre-equipped 417th Fighter Bomber Squadron, 50th Fighter Bomber Wing, at Hanab, Germany, and Toul Rosiers Air Base, France, and from 1957 to 1960 the F-100D Super Sabre-equipped 1st Fighter Day Squadron, later, while still under Jaeger's command, where he designated the 306th Tactical Fighter Squadron, at George Air Force Base California and Rhone Air Base, Spain. Now a full colonel in 1962, after completion of a year's studies at the Air War College, Jaeger became the first commandant of the USAF Aerospace Research Pilot School, which produced astronauts for NASA and the USAF, after its redesignation from the USAF Flight Test Pilot School. Jaeger himself had only a high school education, so he was not eligible to become an astronaut like those he trained. Between December 1963 and January 1964, Jaeger completed five flights in the NASA M2F1 lifting body. An accident during a December 1963 test flight in one of the school's NF-104s eventually put an end to his record attempts. In 1966 Jaeger took command of the 405th Tactical Fighter Wing at Clark Air Base, the Philippines, whose squadrons were deployed on rotational temporary duty, TDY, in South Vietnam and elsewhere in Southeast Asia. There he accrued another 414 hours of combat time and 127 missions, mostly in a Martin B-57 Canberra light bomber. In February 1968, Jaeger was assigned command of the 4th Tactical Fighter Wing at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base North Carolina, and led the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II Wing in South Korea during the Pueblo Crisis. On 1969, Jaeger was promoted to Brigadier General and was assigned in July as the Vice Commander of the 17th Air Force. From 1971 to 1973, at the behest of Ambassador Joe Farland, Jaeger was assigned to Pakistan to advise the Pakistan Air Force. In one of the numerous raids carried out by Indian pilots against Pakistani airfields, Jaeger's plane was destroyed while it was parked at Islamabad Airport. Edward C. Ingram a U.S. diplomat who had served as political counselor to Ambassador Farland in Islamabad recalled this incident in the Washington Monthly of October, 1985, after Jaeger's Beechcraft was destroyed during an Indian air raid. He raged to his cowering colleagues that the Indian pilot had been specifically instructed by Indira Gandhi to blast his plane. It was, he later wrote, the Indian way of giving Uncle Sam the finger. On, 1975 Following assignments in Germany and Pakistan, Jaeger retired from the Air Force at Norton Air Force Base after serving over 33 years on active duty, although he continued to occasionally fly for the USAF and NASA as a consulting test pilot at Edwards AFB. Jaeger made a cameo appearance in the movie The Right Stuff, 1983. He played Fred, a bartender at Poncho's Place, which was most appropriate, as Jaeger said, if all the hours were ever totaled. I reckon I spent more time at her place than in a cockpit over those years. His own role in the movie was played by Sam Shepard. For several years in the 1980s, Jaeger was connected to General Motors, publicizing AC Delco, the company's automotive parts division. In 1986, he was invited to drive the Chevrolet Corvette Pace car for the 70th running of the Indianapolis 500. In 1988, Jaeger was again invited to drive the pace car, this time at the wheel of an Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. In 1986, President Reagan appointed Jaeger to the Rogers Commission that investigated the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Jaeger set several light general aircraft performance records for speed, range, and endurance. Most notable were flights conducted on behalf of Piper Aircraft. On one such flight, Jaeger performed an emergency landing as a result of fuel exhaustion. On another, he piloted Piper's turboprop Cheyenne 400 LS to a time to height record, FL 350, 
35,000 feet, in 16 minutes, exceeding the climb performance of a Boeing 737 at gross weight. During this time Jaeger also served as a technical advisor for three electronic arts flight simulator video games. The games include Chuck Yeager's Advanced Flight Trainer, Chuck Yeager's Advanced Flight Trainer 2.0, and Chuck Yeager's Air Combat. The game manuals featured quotes and anecdotes from Yeager, and were well received by players. Missions featured several of Yeager's accomplishments and let players attempt to top his records. Chuck Yeager's Advanced Flight Trainer was Electronic Arts' top-selling game for 1987. In 2009, Yeager participated in the documentary The Legend of Poncho Barnes and the Happy Bottom Writing Club, a profile of his friend Poncho Barnes. The documentary was screened at film festivals, aired on public television in the United States and won an Emmy Award. Yeager is fully retired from military test flying, after having maintained that status for three decades after his official retirement from the Air Force. On 1997, on the 50th anniversary of his historic flight past Mach 1, he flew a new glamorous Glenis 3, an F-15D Eagle, past Mach 1. The chase plane for the flight was an F-16 Fighting Falcon piloted by Bob Hoover, a longtime test, fighter and aerobatic pilot who had been Jaeger's wingman for the first supersonic flight. This was Jaeger's last official flight with the U.S. Air Force. At the end of his speech to the crowd, Jaeger concluded, All that I am, I owe to the Air Force. Later that month, he was the recipient of the Tony Yanis Award for his achievements. On, 2012, on the 65th anniversary of breaking the sound barrier, Jaeger did it again at the age of 89, riding in a McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle piloted by Captain David Vincent out of Nellis Air Force Base. In 1973, Jaeger was inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame, arguably aviation's highest honor. In December 1975, the U.S. Congress awarded Jaeger a silver medal equivalent to a non-combat medal of honor, for contributing immeasurably to aerospace science by risking his life in piloting the X-1 research airplane faster than the speed of sound on, 1947. President Gerald Ford presented the medal to Jaeger in a ceremony at the White House on, 1976. Jaeger, who never attended college and was often modest about his background, is considered by many, including Flying Magazine the California Hall of Fame, the State of West Virginia, National Aviation Hall of Fame, a few U.S. presidents, and the United States Army Air Force, to be one of the greatest pilots of all time. Despite his lack of higher education, he has been honored in his home state. Marshall University has named its highest academic scholarship, the Society of Jaeger Scholars, in his honor. Jaeger was also the chairman of Experimental Aircraft Association's Young Eagle program from 1994 to 2004, and has been named the program's chairman emeritus. In 1966, Jaeger was inducted into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame. Jaeger Airport in Charleston, West Virginia, is named in his honor. The Interstate 64-Interstate 77 bridge over the Canoe River in Charleston is named in his honor. On, 2006. The state of West Virginia also honored Jaeger with a marker along Corridor G, part of U.S. 119, in his home Lincoln County, and also renamed part of the highway the Jaeger Highway. Jaeger is an honorary board member of the humanitarian organization Wings of Hope. On, 2009, Governor Schwarzenegger and Maria Shriver announced that Jaeger would be one of 13 California Hall of Fame inductees in the California Museum's year-long exhibit. The induction ceremony was on, 2009 in Sacramento, California. Flying Magazine ranked Jaeger number 5 on its 2013 list of the 51 heroes of aviation, he is the highest ranked living person in the list. The Civil Air Patrol, the volunteer auxiliary of the USAF, awards the Charles E. Chuck Jaeger Award to its senior members as part of its aerospace education program. The General Chuck Jaeger Cadet Squadron, SAR FL-237, associated with the Florida Wing, Civil Air Patrol, and based in Brandon, Florida, is also named in his honor. Jaeger named his plane after his wife Glennis as a good luck charm, you're my good luck charm, honorable any airplane I name after you always brings me home. Jaeger and Glennis moved to Grass Valley, California, after his retirement from the Air Force in 1975. The couple prospered because of Jaeger's best-selling autobiography, speaking engagements and commercial ventures. Glennis Jaeger died of ovarian cancer in 1990. They had four children, Susan, Don, Mickey and Sharon. In 2000, 
Yeager met actress Victoria Scott D'Angelo on a hiking trail in Nevada County. The pair started dating shortly thereafter, and married in August 2003. Subsequent to the commencement of their relationship, a bitter dispute arose between Yeager, his children, and D'Angelo. The children contended that D'Angelo, 41 years Yeager's junior, had married him for his fortune. Yeager and D'Angelo both denied the charge. Litigation ensued, in which his children accused D'Angelo of undue influence on Yeager, and Yeager accused his children of diverting hundreds of thousands of dollars from his pension fund. In August 2008, the California Court of Appeal ruled for Yeager, finding that his daughter Susan had breached her duty as trustee. Yeager and Victoria reside in Penn Valley, California, the location of the General Chuck Yeager Foundation which supports programs that teach the ideals be which General Yeager has lived. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.